FederateCoach.com, Lefty's 25th Solo Cataract Case. Hey, whether you're right-handed or left-handed, the rules are the same. doesn't make a difference. So let's watch this case here. Now, the first thing we should notice is there's the incision for the left hand. I like it. it. looks fine. Good draping. I don't like the lighting here. Do you see the lighting? There's two reflections off the center cornea there, that Purkinje image. Those are the two coaxial lights, one in each ocular, lined up with each ocular. And that gives a great red reflex. But look out, all the rest of the screen is very dark outside that, you know, central circular area. That's because there's no paraxial lighting here. You need to have a little bit of paraxial lighting too. So have the coaxial, sure, no problem. Sounds good, great red reflex, makes the visualization easy. But also get at least a little bit of the paraxial lighting going on so you're not operating the dark here. Here's the caps rex being done. I like the forceps that are marked off, similar to mine. And this is pretty good for 25 cases in. That's a nice looking rex. That's, wow, that is, that's very good. I would have guessed that this is at least a few hundred cases in. So fantastic job there on that rexus. Incision looking pretty good too. I like how the limbal vessels were barely nicked. Let's see the hydro dissection. Now, I like to go to the sides instead of across because the cross to me ends up pushing down and holding down the nucleus. And I don't want to exert any pressure there against the posterior capsule. But that looks good. It looks like it's spinning pretty nicely. Let's see the technique here. So here's the phaco probe. That's going to be in the left hand. Let's see what's going on in the right hand. Hopefully a chopper of some design. Now, 25 cases in. Um, I like that you're spending the extra time adjusting the tip to make it the way you like it. Remember, your scrub tech is great, but here she does not have the benefit of using a microscope to see these fine details. So sometimes it's hard to see, especially if you're presbyopic. Ask me how I know. So now, struggling to get the instrument in the eye. Again, use some counter traction. Hook the para with that chopper, or he looks like a paddle of some sort, and that'll help give you counter traction here. So what's the our technique? Probably going to be a groove down the middle, because you have that paddle instrument in the other hand. So here's a nice groove there. I like going under the rexus there. And let's see the... Oh, ch cracked it right away. Just a couple of maneuvers there. That looks good. Let's see a little bit of grooving. So divide and conquer technique. And that's typical. For 25 cases in, divide and conquer is pretty much the most commonly used technique here. I think uh, once you do a few dozen of those divide and conquer, and you're, you're comfortable with that, moving on to a stop and chop would probably be a good move. We've obviously sped the video up here just so we can watch the whole thing. But very nicely done. Now moving to high vacuum mode, getting the pieces up. So very nicely done, divide and conquer. Put that left hand down a little bit to get the eye back in primary. See those two light reflexes? I need them on the center of the cornea. They're not on the center of the cornea. Now they're getting better. So this eye is being shoved away from you. That's because you're lifting up the probe hand. So this left hand with the phaco probe needs to be put flatter make it, the phaco probe more parallel to the floor of the room and get that eye back into primary. So this is, again, you, now at this point, you can certainly tell this is a, a novice surgeon because the eye is not staying in primary. And this is a technique or a skill that just takes time to learn. It just takes time to get that down. So the pieces are coming out nicely. But again, see how the eye is being shoved towards the top part of the screen here? Like that's because, or here, in, in this case, it looks like the nasal canthus. That's because the phaco probe angle is off. You're angling it too steep instead of more flat or parallel to the ground of the room. And then the eye is obviously moving out of primary. Now look, see the light reflex in the middle? That's where I want the eye to stay as you operate. Right there with the patient looking directly at the lights. And you see the Purkinje images in the center there. That's ideal. All right, by manual irrigation aspiration to get that cortex out. That's always a nice technique. By manual really gives you a lot of uh, great access 360. It does require an extra incision of course, and a little bit different instrumentation, but it does make life easier, especially when you're learning these cases. You can, again, switch hands now. So half the cortex removed. Now at this point, the irrigator in the left hand, the aspirator in the right. So certainly, even this left-handed surgeon, you're able to use both hands together. So that's why I say it doesn't really matter if you're right-handed or left-handed. You're going to use both hands together in cataract surgery. Arguably, the hand that holds your chopper has to do a lot more work than the phaco probe hand. So it may benefit you to actually, even if you're left-handed, get that phaco probe in your right hand so that you can use the chopper in your left hand and be so adept and dexterous in the eye in doing those little gentle, subtle chopping maneuvers. Here at the end, looks like slightly enlarging the incision. Let's see what kind of lens we got going on. And here comes the lens. Looks like, right, single piece of acrylic. Isn't that the usual? Here comes the lens going in the back. There it is, single piece of acrylic lens indeed. 
And that's going in very nicely. Make sure that goes in the bag. Using that viscolastic hand, that's, that's nice. So you can inject more viscolastic if needed. Beautiful Rexus, look at that. That's a nice overlap, 360, I like it. Now going in with the bimanual IA to clean out the viscoelastic. Maybe you can tilt the lens or get behind it. Now, if you're just starting off and you've less, done less than 100 cases, I don't mind if you don't fully go behind the optic. You can just tilt it, that's pretty good. Once you get into start you know, toric lenses and things of that nature, you need to go behind the lens optic. Here, shooting up the incisions, a little bit excessive on the hydration there. That's going to do some astigmatism tomorrow, but that's a great case. For case 25, you are doing a fantastic job. Keep up the good work and get the eye back in primary.